Thank you for joining us. It is the Wednesday, December 14th, 2011 edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Another very important transmission tonight, all made possible by supporters and info warriors like you out there. Uh, coming up, we've got Wayne Madsen joining us in a Skype interview from the National Press Club. We'll see how that goes. Uh, with breaking news concerning Fast and Furious connected to the assassination of a federal judge, the attempted assassination of Congresswoman Giffords. This breaking information coming up with investigative journalist Wayne Madsen in the second half of the broadcast tonight. Also, we had our reporters, Darren McBreen and Rob Jacobson, down at the LBJ Library and School of Affairs, Public Affairs, University of Texas. Local press reported over 100 protesters out there total against the attorney general uh, who showed up. And we'll be breaking down the fact that even mainstream media was not allowed to ask questions, and they told our reporters off record they wanted to bring up the government gun running false flag, fast and furious. So that is coming up as well tonight, as usual. The great crew has put more on our plate than we can even possibly try to cover properly. But it's good to have too much rather than too little. Okay, let's continue uh, with the news here. Top story, Corzine knew. And the Financial Times of London and others are reporting what Infowars.com and Zero Hedge are also reporting. Uh, here's the headline, presenting the three unscripted sentences that may have cost John Corzine his freedom. Terry Duffy, the head of the CME Group, formerly the Chicago Mercantile, uh, the big uh, derivatives um, slash commodities group, He'd been playing along with this for a while, but in testimony, he changed it from his written testimony he'd turned in and instead said, no, I talked to top-level people. Corzine was the CEO. He knew. He took money out of sequestered, uh, segregated accounts, people's private accounts. It's like bank robbery. And I've told the Justice Department this. So, see, he wasn't playing along with the theater that, oh, Corzine was the CEO. He doesn't know where billions went. And, of course, they knew a month ago J.P. Morgan had gotten it. And of course, Max Kaiser today made the point that uh, supposedly the head of J.P. Morgan Chase threatened Corzine that he would sleep with the fishes, as a Sicilian saying for you know, having lead shoes or concrete boots, uh, if uh, he didn't uh, basically get those private bank accounts of sub-companies uh, and, and brokerage accounts that MF Global had taken over. But regardless, it's the first time in modern history in 150 years this has happened on the Chicago Mercantile or CMT. Here's the clip of Terry Duffy blowing the whistle in a big, big way. And many pundits, including the reporters at the Financial Times, say this may send him to prison like Bernie Madoff. The only question is, will he end up being killed? Uh, and they'll say it's suicide like Madoff's son. A few days after Madoff spoke to the press and said all of Wall Street's a Ponzi scheme, they said, shut your mouth, old man. Your son's going to be found hanging. And, of course, he was. So that's another big question here. But let's go ahead and go to that clip. After receiving this information, CME remained at MF Global while MF Global atten attempted to identify funds that could be transferred into segregation to reduce or eliminate the discrepancy. A CME auditor also participated in a phone call with senior MF Global employees wherein one employee indicated that Mr. Corzine knew about the loans that had been made for the customer segregated, from the customer segregated accounts. CME Group has provided this information and of these individuals to the Department of Justice and the CFTC who are investigating these matters. And that's the problem with having crooks at the Department of Justice is that if they're already shipping guns into Mexico and blaming the Second Amendment and destabilizing Mexico so there can be a U.S. military invasion, which is now uh, more and more uh, on the front burner, then, of course, they're going to help Corzine cover up what's going on. After all, he's the big advisor to the president, has $35,000 plate dinners at the White House for him. So, of course, Corzine knew he was the CEO. I mean, how ridiculous is this? The issue is Terry Duffy will not go down with the ship, so the rats are leaving the sinking ship. That's how we found out about the Justice Department ordering the ATF. When locals blew the whistle on the ATF and Fast and Furious, that's coming up later with uh, the mob boss here in Austin, Eric Holder, they tried to say, well, it was just the ATF did it. And the ATF director said, you ordered me to. Here's all the memos. Don't send me to prison. And that's what these crooks should realize. There's no honor among these thieves. They don't care about each other. They're all a bunch of cutthroats who kill their mother for stick of bubble gum, 
and probably raped their grandmother for a dollar. Now let's go ahead and go to that same day, same congressional hearing. Corzine says, I knew nothing, as he said at the hearing last week. And he's still got another one scheduled coming up what, next week. And don't count on the Congress people saying, hey, the head of the major commodity group that oversaw you, you, know, you may have bought off the federal regulator, your old buddy, um, and, and, and have it, him invested with you from the CFTC, but you didn't control the private regulator. He says you're lying. We'll see if that gets raised next time he's in testimony. Um, but let's go ahead and go to his uh, lie saying he knew nothing. Where is the money from funds that were supposed to be kept separate? Customer money. Mr. Sinkamp is CFO. Where's the money? Senator, unfortunately, I do not know where the, the money is. Well, who As, does? Uh, I never directed uh, anyone at MF Global to misuse uh, customer funds. So they don't know where it is, and he never directed them to use customer funds that were on their own private accounts. It's totally illegal. It's bank robbery, basically, under federal law. Folks, when you go and deposit a couple thousand dollars, a report is sent to the federal government under Know Your Customer, under Patriot Act. $10,000, let's say you sell a car or something, you deposit it or take it out, a suspicious transaction report is filed. The government, via these wires and all the reporting agencies, knows exactly where every red cent, where every silver nickel, where every dime of that money went. And they just sit there playing this game like they don't know because Corzine won't tell them. It's a bunch of buck passing. Uh, there's a story here um, off the site that often has a lot of great information, Zero Hedge, and uh, there are big Wall Street brokers and people that all write under the gnome de plume or gnome de guerre, Tyler Durgan. And they're saying something that a lot of analysts we've talked to uh, have uh, agreed with, and that is that the collapse of MF Global may have been premeditated, and they set up a shell corporation that bet on the other end and basically took all of that money. And the way they're acting is that's probably what happened here, and that it isn't just money to J.P. Morgan, as they reported part of it went to them, uh, and that this is just a, a precedent-setting case to see, hell, we're already engaged in so many crimes, why not just set up shell corporations, make 40 to 1 bets we know we're going to lose? The alternative is, is he's completely insane, the former head of Goldman Sachs and MF Global, John Corzine, the former New Jersey governor, the big White House advisor to Obama, and thinks he's going to win 40 to 1 bets. I mean, either way, uh, we are certainly in a lot of trouble with these people. Here's another uh, report that just goes into all of this craziness. Bailout paycheck, realtors double counted home sales for the last five years. Uh, in 2011, Forbes 23rd most powerful women in the world. Uh, Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius was caught double counting in the Obamacare budget. Since then, the scandal has been forgotten. Deep sixed, yeah. Or if they do break the law, they just have Congress change the law retroactively. It'd be like Congress saying you can murder people. With Kathleen Sebelius, Obamacare, double counting, no one told me about it. And it goes on to report uh, here out of this uh, news outfit that they had reported it. Now we're hearing about bailout payback. Uh, realtors double counted home sales for five years. CNBC says data on sales of previously owned U.S. homes in 07 through October this year will be revised down next week because of double counting, indicating a much weaker housing market than previously thought. The National Association of Realtors said the benchmark exercise had revealed that some properties were listed more than once, and in some instances, new home sales were also captured. Folks, it's fraud top to bottom. The real unemployment rate is 22 percent or higher, 30 plus percent in California. They say it's 9 percent. They just lie incessantly. So yes, 2 plus 2 does equal 5 or 10 or whatever they say it does. Uh, continuing, a Connecticut mayor, and this is a big Justice Department move. It's why Eric Holder was here in Austin last night pushing UN oversight of our elections says that uh, illegals should be able to vote. Okay, let me ask a question. Can I go to Cuba or Mexico or Russia or China and say, hi, I'm here illegally, I want to vote? Or can I go to Mexico and get free tuition or in-state tuition, like Mexico gets, but U.S. citizens don't get in Texas and most other states? Can I um, 
go there and get a free lunch program like the illegal children do in this country. Uh, I mean, the country's going bankrupt. Uh, again, the issue here is that this is total and complete absolute hypocrisy and is part of a plan of those that want people who are dependent on government who will vote for gun control and other things that aren't popular. And that's the big danger here. And we've got other mayors and people, you know, just saying we shouldn't even have IDs to vote. I mean, can't you see what's going on here? There is six billion seven hundred million people that want to come into this country. Of course, they won't for long as we're going to implode like all the other nations. Mexico is a failed state. And the big mega banks that have hijacked our country are helping destroy Mexico as well. I want freedom for everybody. But I can't go to Mexico and get free health care. I can't go to Mexico and get be let go for DWIs. I can't do that. Why do the corporations here that run our government set, a, set up a double set of rules for illegals? We talk about Mexico because that's about 80% of the illegals in this country. Because it's a third world country that's failed and is next door to us. It's because the globalists want to drive down wages, just like with Walmart and the prison labor for 20 cents an hour or less, and all of it, and the Chinese slave labor and the suicide nets. It's about a race to the bottom, and it doesn't build up China, Mexico, the U.S., or anybody. This is a globalist, parasitic program. And it's so crazy, it says, they pay taxes in directly. That's like acting like the illegals don't get services. Everybody knows they do. In Texas, they give them driver's license. And Perry says, hey, if you're from Oklahoma or Tennessee or California, you come to Texas and you're a U.S. citizen, regardless of what color you are, you don't get in-state tuition, which is about half on average. I looked up the UT numbers, it's more than double. But if you're an illegal, you do. And it's wrong. You know, when I cut my finger off, it was dangling by a piece of skin, helping people who had a broken down boat in the lake. Because I'm an you know, evil racist. It was a bunch of Arabs out there, couldn't speak English. Their boat was smoking halfway on fire. I jumped in, climbed up. Big wave hit, slipped off. My hand got caught. Cut my finger off. Point is, I climbed back in the boat with Kevin Booth. We've been water skiing. Drove back. Get to the hospital. The only emergency room open. Go in there. And I got an insurance card. And they're going, well, well sir, we got to wait while the illegals were just let in. I said, you're not processing them. They said, well, that's city policy. And, and I was just like, you know, oh, but, but uh, and I started throwing a fit in there, saying, I'm going to sue you, I'm going to do this and that, because I knew my dad showed up and said, yeah, you, you better get that attached quick. Again, I've experienced it. I am not a third-class citizen. I, I, the cops pulled me over want to search my car, and I talked to the state police guy, and I said, if I was illegal, you let me go. If I was even drunk, and he goes, yeah, that's true, but I don't want to talk about it. Again, why is that? Because the globalist want to bring down all three of the countries. They want to bring everybody in, get everybody in a big fight with each other. That's why the public schools teach and they have multiculturalism that people come here aren't Americans. That's why they have this Pledge of Allegiance to the Mexican flag that I covered last month in South Texas. It's to get everybody at each other's throats so they can destroy all of our countries. And it's time people wake up. It's time people understand this. Could we legalize 30 million illegal aliens? We probably could if they weren't being brainwashed by the public schools and the system to basically be a bunch of communists. Because the globalists and the think tanks have sold in Africa, Latin America, Asia, and the Middle East that rebellion against the West and corrupt banks is communism. That way they control the revolution. They want communism. So if you want to lose your guns, and you want to lose your wages, you want the country to implode like Mexico, sit there and just say all day, let's have open borders. And, 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 and continuing here, the Catholic uh, bishops come out the 33 Hispanic bishops and say that it's mean and you don't have a big heart, it's a talking point like Rick Perry. You think Rick Perry's a good guy? Uh, that you've got to be for total legalization and that people are mean to immigrants. The United States has the most open immigrant policies in the world. Okay? The most open in the world. I can't go to Mexico. If, Mexico has some of the most draconian regulations in the world. Again, I'm tired of the hypocrisy. And why does Mexico have that? I'm not saying it's even good how draconian they are. It's because they've got 600, 700 million people who want to pour across their border because, believe it or not, Mexico is even better than some of those countries. I mean, what do you do when a million Guatemalans want to come across? And Mexico is not stupid. They know Guatemala is highly nationalistic, like any country would be, and is going to keep their own culture. The point is, that's what's going on here. And uh, you know, I saw these clips. They said, Catholics that aren't basically for open borders, you, you know, are unfaithful. And they said, Jesus is a migrant and all this stuff. Folks, this is a Ford Foundation plan. It's public. You can read it. 
to break this country up, not for Mexico. And that's the thing people have to understand. This isn't some La Infosora reconquering invasion thing like a lot of the Mexican radio stations are named and stuff. It's fun and cute and everything. Okay? America has been conquered by foreign banks. Okay? America was never perfect, but America doesn't even exist anymore. All we've got is the Bill of Rights and Constitution, and that's slipping away. And we're going to be probably worse than Mexico. At least you don't have predator drones bombing people there. All right, I'm done talking about it. But it, 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 you know, you hear about churches aren't supposed to be involved in political stuff, the government says. I mean, can you imagine there was some, some big na international denomination calling for you know, a big government policy to be changed and it, and it was pro-liberty? They'd be shut down. It's because the globalists want this. The globalists who are evil on every front, but then they sell this idea that this is a good idea. Again, read the SPP documents the Judicial Watch sued and got four years ago. Continuing, uh, in Iowa, Paul closes in within one point of frontrunner Genrich. In some polls, he is actually above him or uh, tied with him. Genrich's favorable rating has declined 19 points among Iowans since last week because they actually found out who he is. See, knowledge is power. Oh, by the way, Newt Genrich wants open borders again. Not because he's a touchy-feely guy. He's an absolute tyrant but because he wants to drive down wages and implode this country. You don't lift poor countries up by lowering your standards. That's been proven through major economic studies. Of course, look at NAFTA and GATT. Al Gore said it was going to be great. Look what it's done to us. Was it great? Mexico is losing most of its jobs to China. Because China is the bottom. Because the Chinese people are absolute slaves. They're good, hardworking people, and nobody's going to compete with them, folks. Nobody can. They'll dump pure toxic waste right in the river their own kids drink because the government says so. Well, we got more environmental regulations piled on us where our power plants can't even produce carbon dioxide plants breathe. No one is going to compete with China. It's the globalist plan. They got a billion, 100 million people that nobody can compete with by, by the plan. People criticize China and say we should put tariffs on them to make it fair and make them pay their people more. And they say, oh, you're anti-Chinese. They play that game, ladies and gentlemen. They play that game with people, and everybody's like, oh, I'm polite, I'm not racist, okay, take my rights. All right, continuing here, um, in New Hampshire, uh, Romney's still 33, Genrich uh, 22, Paul 18, if you believe that. And Paul agrees when he was on the show yesterday that a lot of these polls are cooked. Many other independent polls show Ron Paul's a front runner across the board. But let's look at who Newt Gingrich is himself. Not just supporting carbon taxes, open borders, not just supporting Obama socialist care. Uh, not just flip-flopping uh, and, and all the other things he's done. Not just calling for world government and into the family and into world borders, world government. Newt Gingrich has said in speeches and in discussions and has proposed, this is being reported on by Politico and a bunch of other politics, Huffington Post as well, quote, the death penalty for marijuana, for possession of marijuana, of a certain quantity of marijuana, and yet he is among 100 million Americans who smoke marijuana, MSNBC also reported. Yeah, that's uh, Gary Johnson, who we've interviewed, the former governor of New Mexico, a Republican a candidate, who's being completely ignored. And yeah, Newt Gingrich is for the total drug war. He's not stupid. He knows the government ships most of it in. He wants to kill you if you smoke marijuana. I mean, that is kooky. That is crazy. That is dangerous. And he calls Ron Paul a kook. I've seen him on the TV for, for being for the decriminalization. So you don't end up going to jail or having to pay thousands of dollars because at some illegal checkpoint they found some marijuana you have that George Washington smoked. Again, this is the crud. Remember, he wants to kill you if you smoke marijuana. You can't make that up. And then he's an admitted pot smoker in the past. I mean, that just shows you how unbelievably wicked Newt Gingrich is. Now, I uh, have covered Newt and Chong, the hypocrite, and we're going to um, go to break and come back with Wayne Madsen. But first, I want to get to, and we'll, and we'll roll some of the video before I go to it, uh, this uh, footage that we shot, that Darren McBreen and uh, Rob Jacobson shot. They went down last night to Eric Holder, who I've been talking about, the admitted perjurer before Congress, the admitted uh, person who has been caught shipping guns into Mexico to then blame the Second Amendment. The guy who was intimately involved, the cover-up of what really happened in Oklahoma City, his emails have been made public when he was Deputy Attorney General. Uh, this is the guy who's protecting MF Global. This is the guy 
uh, who you know, knew full well that Corzine did take the money, as you just saw, as the head of the CMT broke down. He came to the LBJ School of uh, Public Affairs at the LBJ Library and Museum and was you know, met by the simpering little pomp and was enrolled in a big motorcade like he's an important person. I guess he is a front man for the mafia, so I guess he is. And he's got his little glamour shot there. And he was pushing UN oversight of our elections and basically having the illegals vote. And then it's a checkmate. The banks bring in foreign population, give them chicken feed handouts. If they vote to let them rob everything blind, and then we implode like every other third world country. And mission complete, the elites live in armored fortresses and we're down here you know, drinking muddy water, sewer water where their kids dying. And we'll be there soon. All of you that aren't sophisticated enough to figure this out, you want it, you got it. Uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and uh, go to this report and then come back from break and get to the incredible interview with Wayne Madsen of the Wayne Madsen Report. Please stay with us. Fast and the Furious under the ATF Phoenix, um, hundreds of guns leaked out, given to Mexican drug cartels on watchful eyes of cameras recorded by the ATF on video for two years. And um, under the watch, Eric Holder, he was informed about it's on public record video, him admitting that he knew about the Operation Fast and the Furious. And uh, two years later, here we go, and it's the scandal's broken all across the major news networks, and it's really a shame. You have sheriffs and uh, people in the House, Congress, uh, calling for Eric Holder to resign. And today we're here at the LBJ Library, University of Texas, where Eric Holder was speaking today. And um, there was a bigger protest earlier for a different reason, Eric Holder, and we're here to protest the false flag of Fast and the Furious. And we, we may, may not be here in big, huge numbers, but we are representing thousands. Literally, each one of us, there are thousands of people across the world that are against this, and we're here standing for you. I think it's really sad that a barrier agent got killed and that it seems like the Freedom of Information Act should have been responded to a lot quicker, a lot better, a lot more full. And I think there's a lot of things that are still being hidden. Sending a bunch of guns to Mexican drug cartels in order to um, set up an attack on the Second Amendment. Do you think it was like a false flag attack on our Second Amendment, like they did in, in, uh, on purpose, so maybe they had an excuse to go into the border, yeah, to the border, new gun control laws? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, there's very little you could say to convince me otherwise at this point. So you think Eric Holder knows a lot more than what he's what he's telling the public and what he's telling Congress and the Senate? I hate to say it, but yes, because it's either that or he's totally incompetent. He doesn't know what's going on in his department. This is the guy caught perjuring himself in the memo CBS released last week show that they said they were going to blame the guns in Mexico on the Second Amendment. Is that not a form of false flag against our most basic of rights, sir? And what would you do uh, if president uh, to people like uh, Eric Holder? Well, he should be immediately fired, and then there should be an investigation and find out if charges should be made. And that's obviously over the top. And all these kind of sting operations and false flag, uh, this, is, this is criminal. Uh, I, I don't know whether charges will be made, but he deserves to have charges uh, you know, up against him. It was reported yesterday by the Daily Caller that emails to and from Holder about Operation Fast and Furious that they may exist and that he's refusing to provide them to Congress. Under his watchful eye, the guns were leaked out. I mean, this is a guy, he's a criminal, linking back even to Waco. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, should look into that. And also... Ruby Ridge. Yes, Ruby Ridge. Yep. And, um, I mean, this is a guy on record. I mean, a lot of these guys are on the record for committing things that uh, an ordinary citizen would be thrown in jail really quick. But for some reason, these people in a position of authority can get away with this, even when their peers are asking them to resign. We've got students of of law here is saying that like okay he's a prominent figure in law enforcement and we're honored to have him here today to speak to the law students bunch of BS because he does not represent good law you're busted man we all we all know about Operation Fast and the Furious and the repercussions of that you're, you're exposed the lights on you and this isn't gonna go away I saw a report where he was in D.C. giving a speech. The media asked him about it, and he said, how dare you bring this up just a few days before he came to Austin. All right, we're going to go to break and come back with the, and main, the Wayne Madsen interview. But, uh, I mean, the protesters are absolutely on target. This is a crook, and it's all over so honored to have you. 
That's why we're in so much trouble because these guys pretty much are untouchable and they can get away with anything now even when they get caught. What are they doing we don't know about? What's coming next? Tens of thousands of guns into Mexico? And I reported all this with Celica Steele, DEA agent, six years ago. We knew this was coming. But you can't get the American people involved. You can't get the Mexican people involved. Because all the big media and all the big think tanks control all the groups and have everybody too busy fighting with each other than to ever realize we have a criminal ruling class over the entire globe. It's called globalism. It's called a new world order. And they know sociology, psychology, anthropology, and they manipulate us. And they're cold-blooded gangsters. It's InfoWars Nightly News. What's up with these sorry politicians? Lots of bark. When it's showtime, whimpering like little shih tzus. You want big cuts? Ron Paul's been screaming it for years. Budget crisis? No problem. Cut a trillion bucks year one. That's trillion with a T. Department of Education? Gone. Interior? Energy? HUD? Commerce? Gone. Later, bureaucrats. That's how Ron Paul rolls. Want to drain the swamp? Ron Paul. Do it. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there. Wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. Thank you for joining us. It's now the interview section of InfoWars Nightly News, and we're joined by investigative journalist, former NSA officer, Navy veteran, Wayne Madsen. And I like to introduce Wayne um, this way because I always get a chuckle out of it. Watching C-SPAN, there's some important national security meeting going on, or, or even some arcane thing happening. You'll see him in the first or second row scribbling notes. And he has just broken so many stories on this show over the years. He has traveled all over the world, Libya when it's being bombed, and uh, Indonesia investigating the birth certificate. You name it, he does it. And I remember seeing some evidence to this when it happened, the Gifford shooting with the Tucson uh, event, but now he's gotten some really interesting information that integrates into Fast and Furious and why they wanted to kill the judge and Giffords, but the judge was the real target. And the headline is, the CIA cannot survive without its drug running and child trafficking. And if you're a new viewer, it's on record, DynCorp, Halliburton, the CIA have giant um, white slavery running rings. And people always email me saying, what about black slaves? Folks, white slavery means sex slavery, if you're a new viewer, or publicly educated like I was, uh, and, and including children. So th there's a real race to the bottom in corruption where even people involved in moderate corruption can't blow the whistle on the worst stuff in the world because they will be compromised as well. So that this is why tyranny tends to accelerate, as we're now seeing here in America with the National Defense Authorization Act, secret arrest of citizens, torture is great, drones, you know, tracking uh, ranchers is wonderful. It's because tyranny is here. And joining us with the inside intel uh, is Wayne Madsen of WayneMadsenReport.com. Wayne, uh, from the National Press Club, uh, there in their media center. Uh, Wayne, break it down, and, and, and thank you for sharing this with us. Well, I, I have been in touch with a uh, person that I've known for a few years now who has been a, a confidential informant for both the FBI and the Drug Enforcement Administration. And um, he contacted me recently to let me know that uh, he was actually in communication, in meetings with Judge Roll and Congresswoman Gifford in 2009 about the um, tremendous amount of weapons that were going across the uh, Arizona-Mexico border as specific 
specifically in an area that had been under the <laughs> personal protection of then Governor Janet Napolitano, and that protection for the zone continued after Napolitano became the Homeland Security Secretary under Obama. There were so many weapons available in that zone that um, he knew about an individual who found a, a new AK-47 in a wash um, and went went to the authorities, federal authorities, said, hey, I found this AK-47. They said, there's so many out there, we know, why don't you just keep it? Uh, but it's clear <laughs> that just like uh, we saw under, uh, with the Iran-Contra situation, we're back into it. The target this time isn't Nicaragua. The target is Mexico, and it's to destabilize Mexico. So these weapons were going to Los Zetas and the Sinaloa cartel so they can have at each other, you know, chop off a few heads of some journalists, nosy journalists, which they've done, and other people, politicians. I mean, the interior minister of Mexico went down in a, in a, in a crash. Uh, that's still unexplained. Uh, took out his entire entourage. Uh, but we know that Hillary Clinton has said in the past that she foresees the possibility of U.S. troops being deployed to Mexico. And uh, I think this is just how this thing's going to play out. We're going to just inundate the country with uh, weapons. The drugs are coming out of there to feed the coffers of the CIA, just like uh, the the drugs. Uh, I mean, I remember uh, being in an email communication with Gary Webb, who they destroyed his his journalistic career because he wrote about uh, the influx of drugs into Los Angeles, courtesy of the Central Intelligence Agency. But nothing has changed, and obviously Giffords, um, Judge. Ro Oh, and a third person was mentioned to me, a Republican who represents West, West Texas, specifically the Midland area. Uh, Mike Conaway was also interested in uh, investigating this, this whole operation, and apparently he's so fearful of his life right now, he's not even talking to anybody. Well, let's expand on that. From my own deep research, everything you're saying fits. We know that Arizona was the main conduit. We know sheriffs in West Texas and New Mexico and Arizona were involved as conduits as well, and many have gone to prison. Uh, we know that it wasn't just gun shops allowed to sell the guns. It was 18-wheelers in New Mexico. We know it was a destabilization operation to keep drug prices up, but to also blame the Second Amendment, and CBS has now gotten those emails. But Celica still who is still in federal prison, no criminal record, Vietnam veteran, DEA agent. He came on my show six years ago and he said, in Arizona, in New Mexico, in South Texas, they're training Los Zetas who were trained at Fort Benning, Georgia. They tried to hire me, he said. And, and again, this was when none of this was even happening yet. And I, I knew he was a credible guy. He worked with Gary Webb, one of his main sources, on that Pulitzer Prize, but still it was shocking. He said they're going to elect Calderon. This is a year before. There's going to be a total implosion. There's going to be a giant war, and the CIA's funding the major cartels to kill each other, to jack up prices. Then that'll be used for a North American merger. Now all of this is public. Now, he then get he likes to sell his book at gun shows, Powder Burn, it's out of print now. He, they kept begging him, sell us a shotgun, sell us a shotgun, just like Randy Weaver. He sells a shotgun to what turns out to be an informant, legally, a private sale, needed some money. He's a school teacher at the time, selling off some of his gun collection. They bust him, send him to prison, and told him, you should have shut up about this, but he gets out sometime next year. But the issue here is, this is going on. And we, I mean, you look at the whole shooter, what was witnessed by others, clearly it's some kind of hit. And we now know there were investigations from uh, county reports in Arizona by different state officials and federal. So this fits into it. I mean, this is so big now that Fast and Furious has come out that it was a false flag on the domestic front. Uh, and uh, your source reaching out to you. I mean, this is big news, Wayne. Give us any other tidbits you can and where you see all of this going. You know, the source actually met uh, Judge Roll and Congresswoman Giffords in 2009 uh, at a restaurant in North Phoenix. And, um, uh, you know, the question is, why is a federal judge, um, the, the chief judge for the District of Arizona and a, um, a congresswoman, uh, why are they working together? 
together. And what I gather is this, as you say, this is such an enormous problem in Arizona and the other border states. Why wouldn't a U.S. judge who um, obviously was uh, very concerned about uh, what's going on there be working with uh, uh, Giffords, by the way, was a big and she was carrying on a huge investigation of the drug and weapon smuggling. Uh, so she that was and she was a pro Second Amendment Democrat, something exactly. that the Democrats don't yeah. like. That's right. And of course, West Texas, why would a congressman there be interested? From what I was told, that we know about this special zone on the border that Napolitano was Wayne, taking stop care right of. There. There's a whole lot of Wayne, Wayne, special stop. forces and CIA people operating. Yeah. Wayne, stop. I'm going to reconnect. I'm going to try to shut up and have you make all your points. Clearly, the Skype degrades after about five minutes. That's why I interrupted when I was cutting out earlier and talked for a long time, thinking it would fix. We're going to reconnect, cut there, and I'm going to come back and try to give you 10 minutes unfettered, and we'll let you go to finish up the, uh, your whole point. We're going to dial you back right now. Okay, Wayne, your Skype was breaking up uh, a bit as you join us via your iPhone. Love the Star Trek technology. Uh, but continue. How big an issue is this? You were you, you were getting to the point that Judge Roll was meeting at restaurants with people, clearly showing that he knew people above him were compromised, and he was trying to do investigations uh, himself, kind of like the MF Global thing. Now we're the head of the uh, big commodities group told Congress, hey, I've already gone to the Justice Department. Corzine knows where the money is. You know, actually, he spilt his guts. He had a prepared testimony that he put out so the mafia wouldn't kill him, going along with the lie. But once he got in front of the cameras, he spilt his guts. I mean, it's the same thing. Please continue. Well, I think the fact is we had a Republican-appointed federal judge, Judge Roll, working with a Democratic uh, Congresswoman, Giffords, and a Republican who represents uh, Midland, uh, Texas, which is, by the way, that's George H.W. and W. Bush's old uh, hometown. So th the mere fact is that these individuals must have known this is such an endemic problem. They decided to, you know, throw caution to the wind. Uh, who cares about the separation between the legislative and judicial branch? Let's do what's best for the country. However, Judge Roll paid with his life, and Congresswoman Giffords has been incapacitated very severely. I mean, the message was received, I believe, and uh, uh, there are there are special air corridors that are known to these uh, smugglers, where they fly through these corridors over the border at night, and there's special drop zones and special landing strips that are cleared in advance. Where they they uh, they they uh, drop the uh, the drugs and uh, in some cases pick up the weapons, but the weapons are clearly uh, now we know with the Fast and Furious uh, just going across the border uh, on mass to destabilize the situation in Mexico, and it's been very successful. It's, I've talked to people from Mexico. Uh, there is a state of fear in that country. I mean, the mere fact that we, we see bloggers being beheaded, people trying to get the truth out. Uh, <clears throat> Hillary Clinton saying there may be a need to send troops there. Uh, <clears throat> but we have, we have our troops committed in Afghanistan and other countries, but we don't even have them in the country uh, to, our, to our south. Well, Wayne, the magnitude of this, that you've talked to a, a federal informant known to you, and this information integrates with everything I've got, and that Judge Roll was hit, Giffords was hit, but survived. This other Texas person is, is hiding out. It's admitted that all these other people have gone to jail. I mean, how can they have it where MF Global steals billions publicly and doesn't get in trouble, and the, the head of the Justice Department, who we know was involved in Oklahoma City, Holder is publicly caught lying and says, well, he didn't mean to lie. The intent matters. And even the New York Times reports a year after you and I did that, okay, the Justice Department was shipping drugs in, not just guns out. It is Iran-Contra part three or four. I mean, it is a repeat, but now it's all, they're caught red-handed and no one gets in trouble. Why were they so scared of Roll and Giffords? They knew that they had government credibility and could bring them down. They knew too much, and of course this guy, uh, Jared Loftner, is just like all the rest of these uh, programmed assassins, you know, Hankley, uh, uh, Bremer, um, Sirhan, Sirhan. from uh, assassins or attempted assassins. Uh, we go back to Sirhan Sirhan, of course. Uh, 
All right, Wayne, three's the charm. We got you on the phone here in seconds. Uh, the Skype cut out again from your iPhone, so now we're going via the phone. Right when you pointed out Sirhan Sirhan, his lawyers, LAPD, have admitted it wasn't his gun. Mind control. Uh, from when I read and talked to some of the eyewitnesses, that guy was just the cutout shooting a gun. There were other shooters. What does your informant say about this? Well, uh, this guy, Lofner, I think it's, it's important. It's been reported already that Lofner, of course, has been declared mentally incapacitated to stand trial at the present time. He's now in a federal psychiatric facility in Missouri. And uh, there was a report that he's actually being administered uh, psychotropic drugs in his Kool-Aid, okay? Uh, so here we have the Kool-Aid, uh, Shades of Jonestown, uh, and, and, and I forget which, uh, it was either, I think, Salon or Slate, one of the, uh, those uh, online publications reported this. So it's not, it's not from the National Enquirer or the Globe or anything. It's a legitimate source. But here, here we have um, the, the, uh, the, the shooter, uh, and it looks like, uh, you know, he's just going to be consigned to the federal loony bin, and we'll never really know what happened uh, with him. But clearly he showed all the signs of these other programmed uh, assassins we talked about or attempted assassins. And uh, I think it's important to note, too, that Eric Holder is being defended now by a member of the Judiciary Committee, Hank Johnson from Georgia. Uh, Hank Johnson, by the way, is the individual who beat um, Cynthia McKinney and uh, got a lot of money in his campaign from people like Herman Cain. And uh, Hank Johnson uh, is um, the same guy who said if we put too many troops on the island of Guam, the, the uh, island will capsize. So clearly he's not wrapped too tight. But uh, we, we, have, uh, we have him now as the number one defender of Eric Holder saying it's okay for the Justice Department to investigate itself on Fast and Furious. Well, Wayne, uh, is this informant fearing for their life? You know, I've interviewed a few people you put me in touch with and end up dead, namely the D.C. madam. She was on hold one day on an interview trying to tell me stuff, and I said, listen, honey, don't tell me anything uh, that you don't say on air. You better go public if you've got all these names and stuff. And they ended up obviously killing her, and, you know, you were trying to help her out and warning her. And I talked to her landlord or the condo manager, she owned the condo, and she said, oh, she was a great lady, everything was prepaid, she was being followed, she was hiding stuff from her mother's, uh, he sent me her um, lease agreement and letters, the letter wasn't even in the same hand, not even a handwriting expert you know, could figure this out, it was a totally different hand, uh, just amazing that this is going on, are you worried, is your informant worried? Uh, I mean, if this, if this, if this Texas politician's worried, this is this is big news. I mean, we know there's that weapons conduit right there, and we know Napolitano's a gangster. We know Holder's a gangster. We know that Holder said a month ago, "Don't investigate Fast and Furious." Bush was involved pre uh, Obama, which is true. This, this is an ongoing program. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, my informant has been threatened before. Uh, I mean, he's he's no no <laughs> he's not new to this game and. So he's, of course, taking the precautions, but uh, uh, him being threatened, he's, he's seen that happen before. But uh, obviously the mere fact that uh, uh, we had this happen to a sitting member of Congress and the chief judge uh, for the uh, District of Arizona, uh, a Bush appointee, I would add, uh, I mean, it, it just goes to show that it doesn't matter what party you're in, if you start asking uh, the wrong questions, uh, you're putting yourself in danger, and certainly uh, these two individuals did, and uh, there's a third congressman who's uh, clearly fearful for his safety now. Specifically, Mike Conway, um, your informant said that he was involved researching this and that he's in hiding, basically? Well, no, I mean, he's uh, obviously still in Congress, but uh, my, my source, uh, you know, has been in, had been in contact with him just like he had been in contact with Giffords and and Judge Roll. As a matter of fact, when, like I say, when he met, uh, he met them together uh, in North Phoenix, and uh, uh, he was a little surprised that a, a, a member of the House and a federal judge would have been there, but I think they must have understood the gravity of the situation. So, you know, who cares about separation of powers then when you see uh, the very, you know, the border being used, uh, federal agencies uh, involved in this, this criminal conspiracy to 
smuggle weapons for drugs. Um, and of course, I mean, when I said, you know, in hiding, I meant like hiding out, you know, you said taking precautions, kind of an overstatement there but uh, by me, but specifically, we know it's a criminal conspiracy now. This is one of the few right. cases where it's 100% admitted, perjured before Congress, shipping drugs in, New York Times two Sundays ago, drugs, laundering money, guns, Chicago Tribune, El Paso Times, Sinaloa, allow the ship cocaine in, government admits it's true. I mean, this is bona fide, absolute proof here of a false flag. Uh, how is this affecting, from your sources there in D.C., in closing, how is this affecting the power structure? Well, I think clearly the power structure is concerned. Uh, I think if we knew the truth, we'd find out a lot of people knew a lot of things and never actually said anything, which makes them, of course, uh, uh, culpable, criminally, uh, criminally, at least criminally uh, negligent. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, like I say, you've got as the point man for the Democrats and the Judiciary Committee, a, a guy who's flaky like Hank, Hank Johnson, you know, I mean, I remember when Cynthia ran against this guy, uh, 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 Hank Johnson, um, uh, was, uh, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a Buddhist and, uh, uh, he's some sort of karate expert and yet he's representing a majority African American district. He's an African American, but you know, how many Buddhists would you find in the suburbs in DeKalb? By the way, we could pull the clip Atlanta. up if, if people forget, guys, go to YouTube, type in, uh, the, the congressman's name and capsizing. And I mean, he said it, he said, listen, we can't put too many troops on an island because islands float. He didn't know there are mountains coming up and the land, land masses sticking up. He actually thinks that the rock and the trees is floating. I mean, that shows when they get rid of Cynthia McKinney, who I know you're friends with, who exposed government drug dealing, all this, they put somebody in who literally is uh, just a complete pop tart. I mean, he, he, he probably has, I mean, I'm surprised the man can tie his shoelaces. I mean, who thinks that islands float? Well, I mean, you know, he, maybe he's uh, availing himself of some of the stuff that's coming across the border from Mexico. Uh, I mean, but, uh, you know, clearly if that's, if that's who the Democrats are using as their point man, who's now going on TV to defend uh, Eric Holder, I mean, that, I think that just goes to show how, how, how bad the situation is. I mean, why isn't there somebody who's a little, you know, who's wrapped a little bit uh, better uh, mentally uh, asking the questions. Uh, this is clearly an attempt to protect Holder, which also is an attempt to protect the White House from the political fallout. But that shows the, the strategy to use someone who is a low-grade moron who doesn't even know they're a shill just to babble incoherently. You're not going to get anything out of him. I and mean, I think that is the strategy, just an over-the-top. I mean, take MF Global Corzine, 40 to 1 bets with people's money, J.P. Morgan getting the money. The government knows where it was wired. Now, now the head of uh, the CME group goes public and says, look, they did know where it went. Corzine took the money briefly, and then I'll let you go because I know you're busy, Wayne. I have another meeting coming up with Phil Berg there at the press club. But what do you make of the MF Global and how bold it is for the first time in the history of the Chicago Mercantile, billions missing, and they just say, hey, that's the way it is. Well, this is right. a, well, I mean, it uh, shows that Congress has been asleep at the wheel. I mean, this whole thing where Corzine, Corzine is getting treated with kids, kid gloves when he's obviously a crook, and this thing was all engineered. Uh, the, you know, Goldman Sachs was involved in this whole operation. This was, uh, you know, basically betting all these people's money uh, on a big, uh, in a big gambling casino on uh, on uh, the, the, uh, the futures of uh, these various. European economies, which have all gone uh, basically bankrupt, and uh, I, I, you know, it, look, even on, on Daryl Issa, but you know, he's the chairman of the government uh, oversight committee. I mean, again, here's a guy who's a, who's problematic. He won't ask the right questions because he's got his own political agenda. And uh, but here we have the situation with the border, and uh, I think this thing is going. You know, it's Congress. Uh, Congress is not asking the right questions here, and they're putting up these complete chills uh, uh, to, uh, you know, go up against people like uh, Eric Holder, who, who's a pretty slick operator. After all, he, he represented the death squads in Colombia when he was representing Chiquita Foods. Uh, that's his background. So, uh, uh, you know, he's no stranger to um, 
uh, violence in, in Latin America. He, he, you know, he, he probably, you know, paid for a couple of his houses. That violence, I should say. Well, you're right. I mean, I've talked to Jesse Trinidad and other lawyers involved. They've sued and got the documents. From as best I can research, Holder was the prime commander for OKC. I mean, he is a, and as you said, death squad handler. I mean, he's really a nasty hombre. Yes, that's right. And uh, so, uh, actually, and, and uh, I'm actually not meeting Phil Bird here, but I'm meeting Greg Pallas, who, of course, has a lot of insights on what's been happening especially in Latin America. With oh, this, I'm sorry. You know, One of the guys now. got confused. Uh, but, oh, yeah. well, Greg Palace. Well, is Greg there? Uh, he should be here shortly if he's not here already. I'm All right. Well, I'll let you go in a minute or two so you can go meet with him. I don't know how I got the Phil Berg situation. Maybe it was a... Uh, in my mind questing after the latest information on the birth certificate, the providence of this made-up fake history. We know he's got a fake history and there's a cover-up. And from your worldwide research from Chicago to Jakarta, Indonesia, anything on who he really is? We know the whole family CIA, but do we have any idea who he is? Yeah, it's, it, you know, the more, it, this is like peeling back an onion. The more you peel it back, you you know, it gets stranger and stranger. I, uh, you know, there's always been this charge that he's a secret Muslim. Well, he's not a secret Muslim, but I recently ran across a, uh, there's a, a, a cult that started in Java. Um, uh, it's called the Sabud uh, movement. It started in, uh, basically many years ago, but it gained uh, a lot of adherence in the 60s when uh, Obama's mother was working there. And it became one of these new age cult movements. But if there's clearly links between this movement and the CIA. As a matter of fact, uh, the guy, uh, 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 Bob Pock was his name, the, the man who founded it. Uh, he died in the, uh, in the 1980s. Uh, but Bob Pock, um, uh, was uh, very much uh, in league with the people who overthrew President Sukarno in that CIA coup. They're very anti-communist. And where do they get all their money? This is a worldwide religious movement now, uh, and it's, like I say, it's, it's one of these New Age cults, uh, and we know about them. The CIA loves to take those cults under their wing, and uh, we've, you know, we've been talking about mind control stuff, and I found links between the Sabud uh, sect uh, and uh, the Tavistock Institute in uh, London, which uh, has been directly linked to uh, parapsychology and mind control operations. By the way, Wayne, as you know, in the last five years, Wired Magazine and others have admitted, especially with Afghan troops that engage in massacres and things, they're giving them amnesics now and, and tucking them into weird research facilities for up to a month after these events. They're now kind of publicly admitting and psychologically inoculating everybody that they're engaged in mind control publicly. But the head of uh, the Army's uh, Future Society, um, what uh, Mr. Marshall, uh, says that it's not what weapons we have, but what drugs we're on. But I think the ruling elite, in fact, I know, I think they're taking, as you said, some of their own stuff. Well, I think we have megalomania going on here. I mean, when you see the elite 40 to 1 bets, craziness, doing all this they've clearly reached a reckless scenario and i think they're i think they're out of control and that's more frightening than them being a bunch of cold-blooded bastards what's your final say on that wayne well i i mean um, my my thought is and i'm working on this book on obama and his family's links with the cia and it would not surprise me that uh if he were a member of the Sabud uh, uh, uh cult uh, i think his mother certainly uh, was all of her friends seem to have been involved with them, um, and uh, Lolo Satoro possibly he was too. Uh, this is uh, the, you know they counted former foreign ministers of Indonesia were members of this cult. Uh, uh, people in other countries, as I say, uh, there's a link uh, to some of their British members in the Tavistock Institute. WikiLeaks, and WikiLeaks is connected to similar cults. Yes, yes, it is a cult in uh, Australia. So. I think this is what, when they get these people in there and um, mess with their minds, then they have the fertile territory to control them. And, uh, I mean, but every, every one of these cults you look at, you see a connection to the uh, CIA. Whether well, that's like Skull and Bones or Bohemian Grove. You get them right. there to have a bunch of gay sex. Now you got video of it, film of it. I mean, it's all that's just right. compromising. Yeah, yeah Jones, look at Jonestown, uh, Scientology, you name it. You go down the... You go down the whole list, and you, you've got all these uh, these connections. And the Sabud, look, I didn't even know about the Sabud movement until 
So I discovered this by uh, reading something uh, that I had uh, gotten out of the uh, CIA archival information, and then I went back and read uh, uh, Janie Scott's Janie Scott's book, A uh, Singular Woman, and bingo, it's right in there about uh, Ann Dunham's closest friends being members of this sect or cult, if you will. So uh, we always so go back to the same place. In my 17 years, or now 19 years of research, but 17 years on air, it always leads back to freakish cults, which is the cover for mind control. Wayne Madsen, report.com. Wayne Madsen, thanks for all the time. Go have your meeting with uh, Greg Pallast and uh, award-winning journalist in his own right. I look forward to speaking to you in the future. Watch your back, my friend. I shall do so. Good to be with you, Alex. Thank you so much, Wayne. Good to talk to you. Okay, as we started it out via his iPhone, we ended up on the iPhone via the phone, uh, and that's basically it for InfoWars Nightly News. But I want to leave you with Congressman Hank Johnson from Georgia. Amongst all his weird comments, I'd forgotten about this a year or so ago, or two years ago, saying that you don't want to put too many troops on an island because it'll capsize. And if you watch the whole speech, he was serious. Uh, it was not a joke because he got questioned about it. I mean, it, it just shows the type of whacked out people. The truth is the world is run by a bunch of sickos. Only sickos would engage in the type of evil. A normal person has compassion. I mean, I got too many dogs. I found some labs somebody dumped when I was out in East Texas visiting family. We don't have time, room for it, but I can't get rid of it. Because, you know, I'm a softie. And the globalists see that as a weakness. With them, though, they have no humanity left, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing. And they just are not connected to reality, and they're very dangerous. So we're going to end uh, this edition of InfoWars Nightly News with Congressman Hank Johnson and capsizing islands. And if you don't understand why islands don't capsize, I'm not going to try to explain it to new viewers. Just stop taking the Prozac. We'll see you back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central at PrisonPlanet.tv. Well, this is an uh, island that at its widest level is, what, 12 miles from shore to shore? And at its smallest level, uh, or, or smallest uh, uh, location, it's uh, seven miles uh, uh, between one shore and the other. Is that correct? Uh, I don't have the exact uh, dimensions, but uh, to your point, sir, I think Guam is a small island. Very relatively. small island and about 24 miles, if I recall, long. So 20, 24 miles long, about 7 miles wide at the least widest uh, place on the island and about, 20, about 12 miles wide uh, uh, on the widest part of the island. And um, I don't know how many square miles that, that is. Do you happen to know? I don't have that. Uh, figure with me, sir. I can certainly supply it to you if you'd like. Yeah, my, my fear is that uh, the whole island will uh, become so overly populated that it will tip over and, uh, and capsize. Uh, we don't anticipate that. The, uh, the Guam population, I think, currently about 175,000, and again, with 8,000 Marines and their families, it's an addition of about 25,000 uh, more uh, into the population. And, uh, and also... Uh, uh, that's enough. Like the, uh, I mean, this guy is obviously completely whacked out of his mind or on PCP. And he makes other comments like this. So this is who runs our society. That's who the bankers want in there. You notice their, 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 their naval war leader, their killer, is as sharp as a razor blade. But the, 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 the person they're mining the money is like, and you could tell, just whacked out his brain. And then it's like this long, this wide and capsized. I mean, this is who runs our society. This is who runs our society. And it's like the cops I see on the videos where they find a constitution and they flip out and get scared. That's as crazy as thinking islands capsize. I mean, this society is run by lunatics and scum.
And we, the normal thinking people, have to get up off our butts and get control of our society again and restore the republic or God help us. Because we got a bunch of people like that in control of nuclear weapons. And a bunch of crazy bankers that are running around so cocksure they think they're invincible making 40 to 1 bets with people's money. I'm Alex Jones reporting from the last sane corner of the world, I think, sometimes. And I, again, for the second goodbye of the evening, just after that clip, I, I, I had to come back. I, I, I hope we see you here tomorrow night. I guess I am a terrorist. I'm for decency. I'm for honor. I'm for common sense and the laws of physics. I, I don't think islands capsize. I, I don't defend Eric Holder like this guy. I, 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 you know, I'm the bad man. Because I know islands don't capsize. In fact, maybe I need to be saying, islands capsize. Islands capsize. Bye-bye.